A few days before her birthday, Esperanza begged Miguel to drive her to the foothills before sunrise. There was something she wanted to do. She woke in the dark and tiptoed from the cabin. They followed the dirt road that headed east and parked where they, when they could go no further. In the gray light, they could see a small footpath to a plateau. When they got to the top, Esperanza looked out over the valley. The cool, almost morning air filled her senses. Below, she could see the white roofs of the cabins in straight rows, the fields beginning to take form and the eastern mountains, a hopeful brightening. She bent over and touched the grass. It was cool but dry. She lay down on her stomach and patted the ground next to her. Miguel, did you know that if you lie on the ground and stay very still, you can feel the heart, earth's heart beating? He looked at her skeptically. She patted the ground again. When he lay down as she was, then he lay down as she was facing her. Will this happen soon, Esperanza? Aguatante tantillo y la fruta queda en tu mano. Wait a little while and the fruit will fall into your hand. He smiled and nodded. They were still. They watched, she watched Miguel watching her. And then she felt it beginning softly, a gentle thumping repeating itself, then stronger. She heard it too. Shump, shump, shump. The earth's heartbeat, just like she had felt that day with Papa. Miguel smiled and she knew that he felt it too. The sun peeked over the rim of a distant ridge, bursting the dawn into the waiting fields. She felt its warmth washing over her and turned on her back and faced the sky, staring into the clouds now tinged with pink and orange. As the sun rose, Esperanza began to feel as she rose with it, floating again like that day on the mountain when she first arrived in the valley. She closed her eyes, and this time she did not careen out of control. Instead, she glided above the earth unafraid. She let herself be lifted into the sky, and she knew that she would not slip away. She knew that she would never lose Papa or El Rancho de las Rosas or Abuelito or Mama, no matter what happened. It was as Carmen, the egg woman, had said on the train. She had her family, a garden full of roses, her faith, and the memories of those who had gone before her. But now she had even more than that, and it carried her up as on the wings of a phoenix. She soared with the anticipation of dreams she had never knew she could have, of learning English, of supporting her family, of someday buying a tiny house. Miguel had been right about never giving up, and she had been right, too, about rising above those who held them down. She hovered high above the valley, its basin surrounded by the mountains. She swooped over Papa's rose blooms, buoyed, buoyed by rose hips that remembered all the beauty that they had seen. She waved at Isabel and Abuelita walking barefoot in the vineyards, wearing grapevine wreaths in their hair. She saw Mama sitting on a blanket, a cacophony of color that covered an acre in zigzag rose. She saw Martha and her mother walking in an almond grove, holding hands. Then she flew over a river, a thrusting torrent that cut through the mountains. And there, in the middle of the wilderness, was a girl in a blue silk dress and a boy with his hair slicked down, eating mangoes on a stick, carved to look like exotic flowers, sitting on a grassy bank on the same side of the river. Esperanza reached for Miguel's hand and found it. And even though her mind was soaring to infinite possibilities, his touch held her heart to the earth. Estas son las manitas que cantabella el rey David, e las muchachas bonitas se las contimos aquí. Desperita y mi bien desperita, Marique y manico, ya, uh, ya los par, parjos cantan la luna ya si mi tío. These are the morning songs which King David used to sing to all the pretty girls. We sing them here to you. Awake, my beloved, awake. See, it's already dawn. The birds are already singing. The moon has already gone. On the morning of her birthday, Esperanza heard the voices coming from outside her window. She could pick out Miguel's, Alfonso's, and Juan's. She sat up in bed and listened and smiled. Esperanza lifted the curtain. Isabel came over to her bed and she looked out with her, clutching her doll. They both blew kisses to the men who sang the birthday song. Then Esperanza waved them inside, not to open gifts, but because she could already smell coffee coming from the kitchen.
They gathered for breakfast, Mama and Abuelita, Hortensia and Alfonso, Josefina and Juan, the babies and Isabel. Irene and Melina came too with their family and Miguel. It wasn't exactly like the birthdays of her past, but it would still be a celebration under the mulberry and chinaberry trees with newborn rosebuds from Papa's garden. Although there were no papayas, there, were cantaloupe, there was cantaloupe, lime, and coconut salad, and mach, machaca burritos topped with lots of laughter and teasing. At the end of the meal, Josefina brought out flan de las almendras, Esperanza's favorite, and they sang the birthday song to her again. Isabel sat next to Abuelita at the wooden table. They each held crochet hooks and a skein of yarn. Now watch, Isabel, 10 st stitches up to the top of the mountain. Abuelita demonstrated and Isabel carefully copied her movements. The needle rocked awkwardly and at the end of her beginning rows, Isabel held up her work to show Esperanza. Mine is all crooked. Esperanza smiled and reached over and gently pulled the yarn, unraveling the uneven stitches. Then she looked into Isabel's trusting eyes and said, do not ever be afraid to start over. <laughs>